Let's have a look at how we can further lever our variables and constraints by creating some um, wall panels that will turn into a bit of a feature wall. So uh, what we'll start with is going to our constraint area and we'll let's turn on the variables uh, tab here and we'll create three new variables, a height, width, and depth. And with the height and the width, we'll make those the same. So what we'll do is we'll pop in a little expression here that height is always going to, or width is always going to equal height. And we'll, with height, we'll start off by making that one meter or 1,000. With the depth, we'll make that 50. Now, over to our solids tab, rather than using these primitive solids, which um, give us a, bit, a little bit more le less parametric and constrained functionality, what we'll do is we'll create a, a profile and then an extrusion. So we'll start off by creating a little um, profile and we'll just change up, we'll just place block and change it to orthogonal and we'll place it down there like so. Okay, so now we'll give it some, uh, the by element dimensional constraint and we'll start off here and we'll choose uh, width and we'll give this one here a constraint which can be depth. Okay, so there's the profile of our panel. So what we'll do is back to the solids tool, we'll go for the extrude, we'll make sure it's parametric and give it a distance, that distance can be height. And we'll just loft that up like so. Cool. So there's the first basics of our, of our panel there. So now what we might do is just smooth off these edges here. So we'll give it another variable and we'll just call this one fillet. And now we can make that fillet. We'll make that fillet half the value of the depth. So we'll go into our expression area here and we'll choose depth and we'll divide that by two. Test, expression is invalid, is valid, and we'll say OK. And then we can go to our fillet tool and we'll choose the fillet expression. We'll select tangential edges, we'll click the first one, holding down the control key second, third, and fourth and then click on the screen to complete that. So what that means is if I change the depth to 100, the fillet size should increase to suit. Okay, so on the panel, we'll give it a little bit of, bit of texture now. So what we might do is start with a sphere and with that sphere, we'll array that across the panel. So let's choose the sphere tool. And again, we can use a variable for this and we'll just call it sphere sphere radius and with the sphere radius what we may do is always make it the same size as the fillet test we can say okay so if I if we tick that the sphere radius from there and then we can just place our sphere on the corner, just like so. So now what we might do is move this guy around a bit and put a little bit of a 3D dimensional constraint on here. So it's always stuck to the same distance from, from the end. And we'll call this new variable offset. And we'll make the offset two times the fillet. <clears throat> So we're going to the expression again. We'll use fillet times two in test. We'll say OK. So now we can look at using the dimensional constraints. So what we can do here, let's just go to wireframe for a minute just to have a look at what's going on inside the fillet, inside the sphere, sorry. OK, so we've, we've managed to select that point at the center. And we can click on this one and highlight the edge curve and then choose our offset value. Okay, so we've offset that 50 mil. And again, we can do the same again. Okay, click on the sphere, click at the, the center point of the sphere just to make sure we, we, we have that selected. Come down to our object here. You can see now we've got the, the line highlighted and we can choose offset. Okay, 
So we've just moved that around and we got that in place there. So again, you know, we may want to, to change that value. The offset might be fill it times four, just to give it a little bit more, just to give it a, look, a little bit more distance from, from the very edge. So going back to illustration with shadows, um, what we could look at doing now is subtracting uh, that solid from the main object. So we can use the subtract tool. Um, don't need to merge them. We can select the main solid, select the, the ball, and we get a little hole inside there like that. Okay, so what we might look at doing now is arraying this. So what we might do is work out our distances of what we'd like to cover. So we'd like to cover the array starting from here and ending about here. So we have a, a kind of a distance we want to cover, and that distance would be the fillet plus the offset on this side and the offset plus the fillet on this side. So let's create another little variable here. We'll In this one, we'll use a little expression um, that says uh, we'll do fillet times two because we're going to have two on each side or one on each side, meaning two, and we will then plus that with a bracket again and do offset times two. Test that value. Okay. So we've got a value of 250 mil. So we've got offset of 100, a fillet of 25. So it's 125 times 2 equals 250. Okay, let's rename that to array start distance. So then we can work out an overall length that we wish to cover. So again, that would be, um, we'll call that array length. And what we might do there is again use the expression and we'll do the overall width minus array start distance. Okay, so that's the that's the length that we, we wish to cover for, for our array. So then what we can do is throw in another variable now, and we'll say number of, so how many dimples do we want in our little panel? So uh, let's call that number and change the type here from distance to integer. So it's a nice round whole number. We'll put five in there to begin with. So now we can work out or use a formula to work out the distance from one dimple to the next. And to do that, let's um, we're going here and call it array distance. And in here we again use the the, the, the formula here and we'll say we'll call this array length divided by number. And say okay. So now we should be able to create our, our little array long. So we'll go up to here to our uh, array parametric, parametric um, array parametric solid feature. We will change this from uh, to rectangular, and here we can give it some values. So we'll give it the number for, uh, the number variable for the rows and columns, and in here we'll give it the array distance, and again the array distance. And we won't use the whole element, meaning the whole object here. We'll just do the, the value here. Now, once I click on that, you can see that it's spinning off into to space there. Let's change it to design X. And if we click, we should have some dimples. Now, what we need to do here is actually add um, a value to this to get our to get our number. So we can add a new variable called number one. And what we want to do here is add the expression number plus one. That should be six. And let's just change that to an integer type. Again, this is all about editing. So we've got a little our array icon here. Let's say edit feature change that from number to number one and say okay and we've been able to give it the extra dimples that we require 
So what that means now is this. If we went and changed our hide value to 1500, we should have a nice set of even dimples across our board like so. And of course we can do various things like change the sphere, the sphere offset. So that, that is linked to uh, the fillet, which is also linked to the depth. So if we give it some depth, let's say we change the depth to 100, we get some bigger spheres. And then we'll go and create a cell. If I type in cells into the search, we've got cells. Let's create ourselves a, a new library. And we'll put this in the delivered data set here. We'll call it project cells. And first things first, select everything. And then again in the search, I'm going to type in origin. I can define the cell origin. We might just make that right at the very uh, back here of the, of the panel itself. So then our little cell button comes alive. So we can hit create. First things first, let's make it a parametric cell. And we'll call it, we'll call it wall panel. And we'll hit create. So what that means now is if I double click it, then I should have the, the, the cell on the end of my cursor. I can place that down. I can adjust any of the variables here uh, before placing it. So for example, so for example, we may change the number here to nine. So we have nine dimples across our panel now. And that means we can then look at using the, again, the array as a whole element on the cell. And we're creating a wall panel now out of cells as opposed to creating them from the individual element themselves.